Hey, it's Dry Bear. While you can actually raise affinity and get cute notes from many NPCs in Dragon's Dogma 2, there are only two that actually have romance quest lines and romance scenes. I've already gone over everything that you need to do in order to romance Wilhelmina, one of the courtesans inside Vernworth Castle, and I'll leave a link to that down below. But today we're gonna go through everything you need to know in order to romance Ulrika, the charming archer girl next door that you meet in Melv. Now, unfortunately, with Ulrika's romance quest line, you actually have to do a couple things pretty early on in the game in order to unlock this. So if you're about mid game or later, it's very possible that you completely missed this romance and you'll have to do it on your next new game plus or new game save. Now, I've done a bunch of testing on a new game. I'm on new game plus four now testing out some new things and each go around. I've tested to see what game state you need in order to trigger the Ulrika romance. And I've got some answers for you. So let's walk through it step by step. Your first priority is going to be completing the quest that you get from Captain Brandt, Monster Culling. This seems to be the quest line that triggers the Royce Dragon attack in Melv, and you need this event to happen. So your first priority when first starting out on a new game plus or just on your new game is to quickly get Monster Culling done from Vernworth Castle from Brandt at the inn in order to trigger the next stage. If you leave Monster Culling for too long or you don't do it at all, it's very possible that you will completely miss the romance opportunity with Old Rika. Now, during Monster Culling, one of the locations you need to visit is Harv Village, and when doing so, you will pick up the quest Scaly Invaders, while one of the village members will ask you to clear out the Saurians in the village, and once you do so, he will ask that you return to Harv in a few days to see how the village is doing, and you want to leave the quest at this progress because you will be coming back to Harv later to find Ulrika. Once Monster Culling is done, and if you talk to Brant, you want to head over to the Melv Oxcart in Vernworth, which is on the north northeast side of the city. You should see a man in red petticoat that is the owner of the Oxcart business, and he asks you to take a letter to Lennart in Melv. And again, before you do this, you want to make sure you have monster culling done and you should be good to go. When you take the ox cart to Melv, it should be under attack by a Royce dragon, which is the plague pustule dragon when you arrive. If this isn't happening for you or hasn't already happened in the game, you want to make sure you pass a couple days, sleep at the inn, don't just sit at benches and pass the time because there are some game events that don't trigger until you've actually slept in a bed rather than just passing game time. Some of them are Require you to actually sleep in an inn or your own personal domicile. So if it's not happening, rest. And if you really have to, you can go back and do one or two more quests from Captain Brandt. But the big thing here is that you do not want to progress the story to Batal. So whatever you do, make sure you do not complete Feast of Deception from Brandt, nor should you do the Coronation. It's perfectly fine to do any other quest from Brandt. Just don't do the Coronation and don't do Feast of Deception. Once you get the Royce Dragon attack to trigger in Melv, you'll want to help fend the dragon off where Ulrika will be helping you. And by the way, this is one of the first few times that you'll be able to talk to Sigurd to unlock the Mystic Spearhand vocation, so grab that if you're nearby. Then after the attack, make sure to talk to Ulrika, in which she will thank you for your help and tell you to visit and check in on Melv every once in a while. You want to make sure you have this part of your quest to check in on Melv for the next step to be on pace. Once this is done, pass a few in-game days, rest in an inn at least once and travel to Melv and go to Ulrika's house where a special cutscene dialogue will play where an overseer is yelling at Ulrika, blaming her for the dragon attack. And again, if this doesn't happen to you, but you got the Royce dragon attack, you can do a couple more quests for Brant, just don't complete Feast of Deception. The overseer will call Ulrika a traitor and Ulrika will ask you to spend the night. But unfortunately this time she is not referring to brown chicken, brown cow. She just wants you to spend the night because she's going to steal away in the middle of the night and the game will pass to morning and you'll find out that Ulrika is missing. When you exit the house, Leonard will say that she fled and ask you to go find her. At this point, a couple game days have passed and you should hear your pawns telling you to go back and visit Harv Village to see how they're doing and everything will be lining up perfectly. Head back to Harv Village. There should be a port crystal there that you can just teleport to if you have a fairy stone and find Ulrika there where you will let her know that everyone's worried about her. She will tell you to tell Leonard that she's okay and she will return later. At this point, you're going to want to pick up four cheap swords. I think the cheapest you can get are iron swords. You need to get four of them. One, two, three, four. You can buy them at Vernworth at the armory or in Melv or in any of the cities or carts that have swords, but specifically you need four swords that you can take with you when you travel back 
back to Melv. Sleep in an inn, pass a couple days, go back to Melv, and when you arrive, you can tell Leonard that Ulrika is okay, and you'll need to pass a couple more days outside of Melv to trigger the next step. If you've done everything correctly, when you arrive in Melv, there should be a guard posted at the entrance that will block your entry because everyone in the village is suspected of being a traitor. And then he will just ask you for a bribe, give him 5,000 gold to enter into the town of Melv, head straight to Ulrika's house, and talk to Leonard. He will tell you that the whole town is on lockdown. As you're walking through, you'll see people getting slapped and smashed by guards and treated and they'll say that everyone is being treated as a slave because they're all being ousted and then he will ask you to find four swords that you can give him and his people so they can defend themselves so they can try and escape now at this point you didn't get the four swords ahead of time you're in a bit of a bind because if you're at this state in melv you can't go to the armory and find the swords because they'll be blocked but you can leave the city and go get some swords you can talk to some of the people in the town if you've progressed some of the quests in town you might be able to get some of the townspeople to give you weapons but you need to procure four swords by either leaving the town and coming back or by talking to the people and completing quests. Then give Leonard the four swords and help him escape by fighting the guards. You actually don't need to fight the guards if you don't want to. It just helps ex expedite the process. But with the weapons, he and the villagers will be able to fend off the guards. They will retreat and they will escape and head their way over to Harv to join the new village. Once this is done, again, rest in an inn, pass a couple days if you have to, and head to Harv where when you arrive, it should trigger the new quest, Trouble on the Cape, which normally, if you hadn't done the Ulrika Romance questline, the village elder will tell you that one of the Bistrin villagers went into Stormwind Cave and he should be abandoned, and one of the other villagers says, no, we should go get him, and normally you would just go rescue the villager and bring him back. But because you're correctly on the Ulrika Romance questline, Ulrika will step up to the village elder, call him out for being a POS, and tell him that he's going to wait right here while she goes into the cave to to save the villager and she asked you to come with you so during this quest she will come along and use her bow and her wits to fight off the enemies and you can rescue the villager and bring him back afterwards when you come back with the villager alive she will be elected chief in a crazy turn of events and then you'll just want to pass a few days and then after some time the village will start to be restored you'll have multiple vendors from both Melv and Harv together and after a few days pass you'll want to head to the dock behind the inn to find Ulrika standing there. When you talk to her, she will tell you to visit her at night, where it will trigger the final romance scene, and unlike the night you spent with her after the fight with Grigori the big dragon, and the night you spent with her when she was about to run away, this one actually is you hopping on the good foot and doing the bad thing. And this is the final completion of the romance questline with Ulrika. And again, there's a couple places where you can get stuck with this. There's a lot of people that didn't do monster culling from Brant, which means that they didn't get the Royce dragon attack in Melv, which means the rest of the sequence of events didn't happen for them in their playthrough. It's also possible that you completed the Feast of Deception, did the coordination, got your permit to pass into Batal, moved on to Batal, which I do believe locks you out from any of the Melv progression and uh, subsequently locks you out of the Orika Romance questline. So if you missed out on this, it's very possible you'll have to do it in your next playthrough, in your next New Game Plus rotation, in your next return of the cycle because you missed out on the early parts. So make sure you do these in order and if you get stuck just try to rest a couple days. Your main points of breaking are going to be Harv Village, Captain Brand, and then talking to Ulrika inside of Mel Village. Now the good news is you actually don't need to give Ulrika any gifts during this process. And in fact, if you do everything perfectly, there won't even be an opportunity to give her gifts during this. But if you complete all of these quests, you will instantly get maximum affinity with Ulrika. So there's no need to do gift gifting, but if you have to, you can give her the uh, gift flowers made by combining any two of the wildflowers you find out in the world, but you shouldn't need to as all of these quests will give you affinity with Ulrika. And that's it, that's the complete guide to getting Ulrika Romance in Dragon's Dogma 2. This and Wilhelmina are unfortunately the only two romance lines that you will have available, though you can raise affinity and share cute notes with many NPCs in the game. If you found value in today's video, leave a like down below, leave a comment for the algorithm to help this video get seen by more people, and don't forget to check out my other channels for other content and other stuff and other things.